All right, so this is a great exercise for your low back, pelvis, and hips. You're gonna to wanna to find yourself inside lying. Doesn't matter which side, you can do both sides. You're gonna set up with your hips bent to 90 degrees, your knees bent to 90 degrees, your feet flat on the wall, and your shoulders in line with your hips. You don't want your shoulders to be in front of or behind your hips. And you wanna be stacked, so you don't wanna have one shoulder rolled back or rolled forward. Just try and set yourself up so your shoulders are stacked in line with your hips, and then we've got 90 degrees all the way down to our feet. Now with our toes, we wanna to make sure that we also don't have one toe in front of the other. So you want your feet to be lined up and just stacked on top of each other. Or you could do this with one foot up a little bit higher, but I wouldn't go any higher than your hip when you do this exercise. You don't wanna bring that leg up too high. If you wanna have a little bit of space there, though you can. Now you're also gonna to wanna to have a small object to place between your legs. You don't need the object. In fact, you can actually graduate or progress this exercise over time to doing it without an object. A larger object is gonna make this a little bit easier. The smaller the object, the harder the exercise. You want it to be something that doesn't hurt when you squeeze it though, because this is gonna go between your legs and you're gonna be really pushing that object down. So if it's say something like a softball, it's probably not gonna feel good when you push it down into the bottom leg and you don't want this to be inhibited by pain. So keep that in mind when you are choosing your object. I have some clients that'll even use things like liquor bottles because they've got more surface area and they roll really nicely between their legs. Get creative and use whatever you have at home. So when you set this up, you'll have that object between your legs. I like to take my top hand, place it on the ground, and actually send my elbow forward a little bit. That helps my rib cage kind of fall back in space, because when you do this, you want to resist the urge to end up in extension. So I don't want my pelvis to dump forward, I don't want my low back to arch, and I don't want my ribs to kind of flare up in space like this. I actually want the opposite. So I'm gonna tuck that tailbone or my pelvis underneath me and kind of round my low back a bit, place my top hand on the ground and even glide my elbow forward in space, and that'll encourage my rib cage to fall back so that I maintain a bit of flexion the whole time. We don't, or we don't ever wanna lose that flexion when we do this. So once we're all set up, we're gonna squeeze that ball, but I really want you to think more along the lines of push the ball down with your top leg. We're really gonna be focusing on this top leg here. Make sure that your feet never leave the wall, nor does a part of your foot ever leave the wall in this exercise. So I'm gonna squeeze that ball down, and then I'm gonna see how far I can pull my knee back in space, all the while pressing that ball down. Now when I come back, I like to add a bit of a breath here. So I'm gonna slowly inhale through my nose. As I exhale through my mouth, I'm gonna see if I can pull that knee back a little bit further without losing that tailbone tuck. And when I do that, I really feel my groin working quite high up close to my pelvis. And then I'm gonna actually see how far I can slide my knee forward. Again, still pressing that ball down the whole time still keeping that pelvis tucked and my spine flexed. If you wanted to add a breath here, you could as well. And then we're gonna come back, see how far we can go. Again, I like to go through one breath here, pull back and press down, and then glide it back forward. So you're just slowly making your way through, driving that, far, or that leg as far forward as you can, pulling it as far back as you can. I like to bank a little extra time here. And as I said, if you give it a good exhale and you see if you can pull that knee back a little bit more, you should feel your groin working quite high up to your pelvis. And so it'll feel like it's not so much close to your knee as it is quite high up in that pelvis. And you'll just work your way through, going back and forth really slowly. Again, I like to add that extra breath when we pull back. You can do that on both sides. If I've prescribed this to you, make sure you check your sheet to see how many reps or for how long you're doing this on both sides. And make sure you check to see if I have you doing this on one side more than I have you doing this on the other side because those are important details. Whenever you watch one of my videos, make sure to check the description below the video because I'll always drop links to related videos, links to exercises that would go well with the one that you just finished watching, links to free mobility classes, eBooks, and to my ever-growing library of full-length training videos. Additionally, if you found this specific video helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button below and that'll send me the message that you wanna see more videos like this one. 
You can also subscribe to be notified when new videos like this one are available. And if there's something specific that you wanna see a video on, just let me know in the comments below and we'll try and make that happen. Otherwise, take care and we'll see you in the next one.